Hi everyone, my name is Abby Adam. I am a student fellow at Gettysburg College's Civil War Institute. Um, today I will be interviewing Adams County Historical Society Executive Dir Director and Gettysburg alumnus Andrew Dalton. Andrew, thank you for joining me today. Sure, happy to be here. <laughs> So could you please tell us a little bit about the history of um, Adams County Historical Society? Yeah, so uh, we've been around since 1888, actually, one of the oldest uh, cultural organizations in the town. Uh, we started as a very small group that was uh, set out to, to preserve the community history, which is not just the, the history of the Battle of Gettysburg, but so much more. We have over 300 years of amazing stories in Adams County. Um, so the organization grew and then was incorporated as a, as a nonprofit in 1940. And uh, over the past 80 years, we've been growing and our collection is now in the millions of historic items. And uh, we're actually just now building a new home for our society, a new museum and education center. Um, and that'll be just north of Gettysburg where we just broke ground and we're hoping to open by the end of next year. And it'll be a wonderful way to save the millions of items that we have right now in, in not so great conditions. Yeah, oh my gosh, definitely. So do you have, um, so I'm guessing it seems like you guys have um, a lot of items and um, quite a bit of items, definitely. So um, what would you say? Yeah, we do. Most... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we, we have uh, uh, several million, but, uh, you know, the collection really ranges from early artifacts like thousands of Native American projectiles and, and other stone tools. And we have uh, early Gettysburg documents. So we have the original map of the lots of Gettysburg when it was when, when the town was established in 1786. And uh, of course, during the Battle of Gettysburg, we have a ton of artifacts related to the local population and their experiences during during the battle and Lincoln's visit. And, and of course, uh, all the, the many decades since then. That sounds fascinating. Do you think you could pick a um, favorite or anything that kind of struck you as the most interesting through your work? Sure, yeah, that's kind of difficult. I think uh, we have an original program from the Gettysburg Address ceremonies, uh, the dedication of the National Cemetery. And there's probably only a few copies of that in the world that still exists. And so we're, we're lucky to have one. Uh, we also have a, a manumission paper for a slave owned by Francis Scott Key, who was set free in Gettysburg at our courthouse in 1831. And we have the original document signed uh, by Francis Scott Key. So that it's always amazing to, to hold a document like that. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's fascinating. So um, it seems like you guys have a ton of interesting things. Um, so you did tell us a, a bit already about the um, extent of the Adams County Historical Society archives in your collections. Um, and so what kind of project events, um, educational outreach or other services do you provide? Yeah, well, um, right now, so we're closed because of COVID. Um, but uh, on a typical year, we usually have researchers who come in to do um, any kind of work related to either genealogy or property history, a lot of old farms and, and houses in the community. People want to research and learn more about the stories behind them. And then we have quite a few people who come in just to research Gettysburg and, and the community during the Civil War period. And we have hundreds of, I think, over 300 civilian accounts of the battle, uh, a lot of them original newspapers and diaries and letters. And so we have quite a few scholars and, and, and local historians and, um, and others that come in and access those materials. But we do research. We have a, right now, we, we have a weekly uh, Facebook Live program every Thursday night at 7, and those tend to do pretty well. Um, and uh, what we don't have now is a museum, and that's what we're excited about. Uh, a lot of our artifact collection is in storage right now. And uh, we'll be opening a new facility and putting a lot of those materials back on display. And they were on display about a decade ago. We left Schmucker Hall, which is now the Seminary Ridge Museum. And we moved here as a temporary um, facility. It's the, the Wolf House at the end of the seminary campus. And uh, we're really kind of jam-packed into this old house. And a lot of our artifacts were packed up and, and put into crates. So getting all of that out and, and uh, into the proper conditions and then actually sorting through these materials for the first time in a decade to figure out what we actually have is, is a very exciting project. Um, so it'll, we'll have the research component still in the new facility, as well as a, a large education area uh, for our programs. And then the new component, which is the, the museum. Um, and we actually haven't announced this yet, but uh, um, we're, we're gonna put out a press release in the next few weeks. We're, we're actually gonna be uh, working with the, the firm that did the Museum of the American Revolution in Philadelphia. Um, so it, it's a, a wonderful okay. firm. Ely Kohler out of uh, Washington, D.C. We just selected them a couple weeks ago uh, to do the museum design and uh, coordinate the fabrication of the exhibits. Uh, and it'll be about a 5,000 square foot exhibit gallery. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. Has COVID um, caused any 
difficulties or extra challenges with that project or has the um, kind of, I guess, um, less visitors um, to the historical society made that a little easier? Yeah, it's, uh, I think there's, you know, obviously been um, an urgency, I think, with, with the situation with the virus where a lot of nonprofits have seen kind of a surge in support. And so we've actually raised close to $5 million over the past eight to 12 months um, for the project. So it's very exciting. Uh, the, the project's going to cost between seven and eight million, but we, we're getting uh, um, pretty thick into the fundraising, and that's most of what I do during the day. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, COVID has, has definitely impacted our, our day to day activities, and, um, you know, we've lost some revenue from not being open uh, to researchers, but we, we really have seen uh, the urgency that, that a lot of donors feel. Uh, during the pandemic about supporting their favorite nonprofits. And I think it's added a layer of, uh, um, of importance to our project, which is, which is actually good. Yeah, definitely. And plus I bet um, working on the project, especially um, as COVID it's um, as it comes into the close into the future, well, um, there's going to be a lot of people looking for that sort of um, educational opportunity and to just go out and visit new places. So I think that'll be um, very exciting and coincide with their project. Well, yeah, you know, we, uh, it's funny, you know, bus tours have all but stopped. And when we do reopen, we're, we're looking forward to being a part of the typical, you know, tourist experience in Gettysburg, as well as being an entity that's catered to the local audiences. You know, local history, of course, is always important to the people who live here. But because we're Gettysburg, our local history is, is nationally significant in a lot of cases. And so, you know, whether it's the Battle of Gettysburg or Eisenhower or Thaddeus Stevens, um, there's so many storylines that we can use to connect with just about anybody who who visits the area. Mm -hmm. So do you have any planned um, exhibits for the museum? Yeah, um, we're gonna do a chronological experience and this is all being worked out now. We have uh, our historian here, Tim Smith, is pretty well known in the Gettysburg history community. He's doing the, a lot of the writing uh, for the museum and also Sue Boardman, um, who's one of our board members. She's also very well known in the community as a, both of them are licensed battlefield guides. So they're uh, right now identifying the artifacts and, and images and other media pieces that'll go into the museum. Uh, Jake Borat is also going to be doing some of the media for us. He's pretty well known for movies like the Gettysburg story. And, uh, you know, of course, his father's well known, G Gabor Borat, the professor of history at the college for many, many years. Um, so they're working right now to, to finalize exactly what artifacts and what images will be going into the museum and what stories we want to highlight. But it'll be a chronological experience, starting with uh, prehistoric times and Actually, our first artifact will be the, we have the dinosaur footprints that were recovered in Adams County. And um, you may know some of those footprints are at the uh, bridge on Big Round Top, uh, but we actually have a big slab of rock with the footprints from the dinosaur. Uh, so that'll be a wonderful way to engage kids who come in to be able to bend down and touch the dinosaur footprints and uh, see a big illustration of our Adams County dinosaur. Uh, but it'll start with, with that and really go through our, our entire history as a community. We have like I said, tons of probably tens of thousands of Native American relics. Um, and then the early history of the community, we're going to highlight, you know, the establishment of Gettysburg, the early roads and taverns during the Revolutionary War period. Um, of course, during the French and Indian War period is uh, there's a lot happening here with kidnappings of early settlers like Mary Jameson um, and Richard Bard. Um, and then the Civil War period will be about a third of the museum. So we're going to highlight the roles played by some local soldiers that were um, that some at Andersonville prison are wounded in 1864 uh, during the, the Valley campaign. We have amazing artifacts from some of those soldiers. Um, and, and of course the civilian story during the battle will be a large component. Um, but also I think the, the, the time periods after the Civil War are really fascinating with the establishment of the battlefield and the commercialization of, of Gettysburg to you know, become a, a tourist Mecca. Um, so we'll talk about those early uh, commercial ventures that some succeeded, some failed, and some were very unpopular. Of course, Eisenhower is a big story, and so we're going to cover all of it, really, everything from uh, from dinosaurs to, to Eisenhower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In that way, you get, um, you, of course, you get the Civil War narrative in there because of how you said that's a really big national significance. And you also keep local people interested because of how, well, I'm sure, um, oh, I'm sure they d don't tire of the Civil War. It's always nice to see, um, <laughs> to see things that are um, kind of outside of that realm, too. So I think that's a really great yeah, we're, yeah, right. Yeah, we're excited. I think, you know, everything in Gettysburg is Civil War, Civil War, Civil War. And, you know, well, of course, the Civil War is a big part of local history, but it's only a part of it. Um, and uh, when we talk about the Battle of Gettysburg, you know, this will not be a museum that 
that delineates all the troop movements and command decisions. This is not that, uh, that, you know, the visitor center has that of course, and other places as well, but we're going to tell the story of the people who lived here, what it was like to wake up and look out your window and see all of these things happening. Um, and really powerful stories of children caught up in all of it and, and women and African-Americans that played a part um, in the stories that you may know, but they played roles that haven't really been covered before in, in any kind of museum. Um, so it'll be very heavy on, on the community and how the community dealt with some of these incredible events. Yeah, yeah. Wow, sounds amazing. So I'd just like to ask you a quick question about um, your, your own role in deciding to seek a career with the Adams County Historical Society. Um, I was wondering, um, I was wondering if you, um, if like your experience at Gettysburg College um, kind of influenced you to take a job in the community or um, how it impacted your line of work? Yeah, sure. Um, so I actually grew up here, which is, I know, rare. There aren't many students at Gettysburg who are uh, um, locals or townies, I guess. Um, I was born in Maryland, so really I'm not, I can, I don't have to carry that, uh, that word on my back. But uh, <laughs> um, I started volunteering here when I was in high school. I love the place. It's it's an amazing untapped resource. There are still hundreds of boxes of, of artifacts and documents that have not been looked through in decades, and in some cases, not at all. Um, so it's a really exciting place. And I started working here um, in college, and uh, I graduated from Gettysburg. And then my predecessor got another offer and left, and um, I was kind of his right-hand man. So. I uh, was really fortunate to take over here, but uh, yeah, I think at Gettysburg College, I really enjoyed um, a lot of my classes there that that uh, you know helped me gain a more uh, a deeper understanding for for the context behind some of these events in our community. And Michael Berkner was a big influence on me. Uh, he's a good friend and um, known him my entire life, I think, since I was a toddler. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Michael Berkner is a, a wonderful guy and really appreciates local history, which I think. Is important. Um, I don't always see that, you know, in in the academic world. Sometimes there's a a sense of looking down on local history as trivial or or uh, um, you know not consequential enough to to be written about or researched. But you know, I think every piece of history is local, and uh, um, the most powerful stories are about people and and aren't always the they're not always the people who you might read about in a history book, but they may have contributed in a really meaningful way. And I think uh, good history is also, you know, service to the community so that people can connect with their past, whether it's their own family or uh, the house that they live in or a, a landmark that they pass every day on the way to work and might not appreciate. Um, so I think we, you know, at, at the college, I really appreciated the um, Professor Berkner's uh, um, ethos <laughs> about incorporating local history and, and some of these really wonderful stories that we have here at the Historical Society. Yes, absolutely. So um, I guess we're almost out of time. So I just, um, as a final question, do you have anything else that um, I haven't talked that we haven't talked about today that you would like to add? Um, no, other than, you know, for if there's students who are going to watch, you know, we would love to uh, to have you come in and, and uh, you know, work here in some capacity as, you know, as interns or as volunteers. We uh, we have a, a an internship program and for each semester, of course, COVID kind of interrupted that. Um, but uh, we have a lot of opportunities. So if you check out our website, you can learn more about it. It's achs-pa.org, a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, but you can also check us out on Facebook. We uh, we post a lot and, and uh, our Facebook page is pretty popular. So if you search us there and like our page, you can stay up to date with what's going on. But uh, um, we're gonna be, actually our new building is right next to the college campus. So for those of you who are, I guess, you know, first year and sophomore students, you'll probably have an opportunity um, to, to visit us at our new building. Um, so look out for that. It's 625 Biglerville Road, um, right at the edge of the college athletic fields next to the, the nursing home out on the Biglerville Road. Um, so you'll be able to see it from uh, <laughs> if you're walking by the tennis courts or out the Mummersburg Road and uh, by the soccer field. So um, you might see us working on the building over the next year and a half or so. Uh, but but thanks. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk more about the Historical Society. Yes, of course. It was great talking to you. Thank you for joining me today. Sure. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, thank you.